Hello health champions. Intermittent fasting has taken the world by storm because there's so many benefits to it. The only drawback is that you might get hungry. So today I'm going to talk about five tips to control hunger during intermittent fasting. Coming right up. Hey, I'm Dr. Eckberg. I'm a holistic doctor and a former Olympic decathlete. And if you want to truly master health by understanding how the body really works, make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss anything. I want to go over five ways that you can control your appetite when fasting. And then at the end, I'm going to throw in a little bonus to tie it all together. So make sure that you stay tuned. Intermittent fasting is simply time restricted eating. So for example, if you had one meal at noon and then one or two meals until four o'clock, then you would have a four hour feeding window and a 20 hour fasting window. Other ways of fasting would be a 16, eight, which would be 16 hour fasting and eight hours of feeding. It doesn't really matter how you do it. It's just that you allow a longer fasting period to reduce insulin. And some people would also go on fasting for several days if they have really stubborn insulin resistance or type 2 diabetes or if they just want to make it happen faster. So however long you go fasting, chances are you might get hungry. So we're going to talk about how to control that. So some of the benefits are weight loss, insulin reduction in insulin resistance and type 2 diabetes. It can boost immunity, it can boost autophagy, it can boost mental clarity, and the benefits go on and on. You can even build a better brain. You make more human growth hormone and more brain-derived neurotrophic factor when you're fasting, and those, both those hormones are essential for making new brain tissue and new connections. And the only thing that could really sabotage all these benefits is that for some people, if they don't eat, they get hungry. First of all, we want to understand hunger. So most people who have never missed a meal, mind you, they think that it's simply a linear function of time, that the longer you go without eating, the hungrier you get. And that is just not how it works. Hunger is not linear. It's not constant. It varies and it varies according to a hormone called ghrelin. And the body produces ghrelin at certain times of the day that usually are habitual. So whenever your body has learned that it's time to eat, such as breakfast, lunch, and dinner, is when it has learned to release some ghrelin to make you hungry at those times. But what most people don't realize is that if you release ghrelin and you don't eat, it will still go down. And then if you increase it again and you don't eat, it will go down again. So what actually happens for most people over time is that ghrelin actually reduces and they get less and less hungry when they don't eat. But even knowing that about ghrelin, you still want to expect to get hungry. It will happen. And when it happens, it's usually because you're not fat adapted. If you are fat adapted, your body has access to fat, to fat stores for fuel, and it doesn't sense any lack. It just goes on with business. If you get mood swings and if you get low energy and you lose focus, and you get irritable when you miss a meal, that simply means you're not fat adapted. That means your body does not have metabolic flexibility. It doesn't know where to get energy if you don't eat for a few hours. That's not a normal situation, but if you stick with it, you will become fat adapted and these things will go away. Hunger will come and go. It's not a constant. It doesn't increase linearly. So if you ignore it or if you have something to drink, then it will go away. Next thing to know about hunger is that it's just hunger, all right? It doesn't mean that you're going to die. It doesn't mean that you have something to worry about. There is a little bit of anxiety. There's a little bit of fear involved because there's a certain survival tied to hunger that 
if we didn't know where the next meal would come from, then it would make sense for the body to create that urgency for the body to go out and look for food. But fasting is very different from starvation because with starvation you don't know where the next meal is going to come from. That's very fearful. But if you have the freezer full of food, you know that there is plenty of food. And now that hunger, it's just hunger. It's just a body sensation. You can choose to ignore it. It's kind of like muscle aches if you're working out. If you're sitting in a sofa, you don't expect to have muscle aches. If you're working out with dumbbells until your muscles start burning, now you expect that pain. And then that pain is normal. That body sensation is normal, but you don't worry about it because you know why it's there. Same thing with hunger. It's just a body sensation. If you know that there is nothing to worry about, your life's not in danger, it's just there because you're pursuing a goal, then there's nothing to worry about and you'll be okay. And finally, hunger, it will get easier. As your body becomes more fat adapted, as your body learns to use fuel, then it gets easier and easier and easier. Now that you know that hunger is nothing to worry about though, there's still some things that you can do to make the ride a little smoother. And the next thing is to add minerals because when you fast, your insulin goes down. Fasting is the most powerful way there is to reduce insulin levels. And insulin holds on to sodium. So when insulin goes down, you're going to lose sodium and the body might even increase insulin in order to be able to hold on to sodium. These minerals and glucose and things like that are precious resources in the short term. And the body will do what it needs to to maintain a stable level. So by increasing minerals, by making sure that you get enough sodium and potassium and magnesium and calcium, then you can actually control hunger. You can be less hungry simply by making sure that your body has enough minerals. Fluids go together with minerals because fasting reduces insulin, insulin makes you lose some sodium, and with that sodium you also lose water. So drinking plenty of fluids has two purposes. One is to make sure that you restore, you rehydrate the, the fluids that you've lost. The second is that fluids often make you less hungry. That very often your body just wants something and if you just give it something then 10 minutes later you're not hungry anymore. And the best drink obviously is water. Next best would be herb tea, next green tea, and then black tea and coffee. And why are they in that order? Because more caffeine in some people, and depending on how much you have, it's not typically a huge problem, but it can be, that more caffeine can trigger stress, which can trigger cortisol, which will raise blood sugar and trigger insulin. So it's not something most people have to worry too much about, but you also don't want to go ahead and just drink 10, 12 cups of coffee because that probably will backfire. Fasting tool number four is called bulletproof coffee, and that's simply coffee with butter. And what it does, it provides you some calories, it provides you a little bit of satiety, but it does it with negligible insulin. Right? So your insulin is dropping because you're fasting and then along when you have your bulletproof coffee which is pure fat then you get a tiny little blip and then it keeps dropping. So it's negligible. However, if you can, you're better off not having the bulletproof coffee because fasting straight through is always going to reduce insulin more but you use the bulletproof coffee as a tool if it's the difference between making it through the fast or not, right? So use it if you have to, but if you don't feel you need to, then just skip it. And tip number five is to combine intermittent fasting with a low-carb diet because carbs 
act as drugs. Okay? The brain has opioid receptors that can get stimulated by things like sugar and wheat primarily, but also carbs in general. That's why they give a lot of that pleasurable effect. But realize that it's a drug and it makes you eat more. Carbs are also less satiating. You could have a huge meal of pasta or rice and still be hungry two or three hours later. That's not going to happen if you eat protein and fat. And of course, this results in carbs making you hungrier. Next good reason to have a low carb diet when you're fasting is that carbs increase insulin. And that's the whole point of doing the fast is to reduce insulin. And when you increase insulin, you prevent fat burning. So that negates the goal. But worse than that, it makes you hungry because if you can't get to the fat, if you can't burn the fat, now you're not as flexible. You don't have the same metabolic flexibility because you just locked away some of the fuel. Another very powerful way that insulin makes you hungry is it blocks leptin. So anytime you eat, your body makes leptin, which is a satiety hormone. The leptin signals to the hypothalamus that you've had enough to eat. We've got enough fuel, we got enough nutrients, we're full, we're done, let's hold off for a while. Well, carbs and insulin will block that message so the brain doesn't sense that you've had enough to eat and you keep eating and of course you get hungrier. And one more way that low carb makes it easier is that the lower carbs you eat, the more ketones you make. And ketones are another source of energy for the body, especially the brain. And when the body and the brain has enough energy from those ketones, then the ketones act to reduce hunger. Now think of keto and fasting as being related. Even though you're eating some food when you're doing keto, you're still eating in a way that you're allowing the body to do fat burning, to get fat adapted. And when you're fasting, obviously fat is the primary fuel because that's your long-term storage. And they both allow for you to become fat adapted very quickly. And that makes for a much easier transition. So if you were to allow yourself to go low carb or maybe keto for a week or two or three, however long it gets you to get comfortable with fat adaptation, you will find that you almost want to start skipping meals because your body has just found that metabolic flexibility. So the transition would be much, much easier to do intermittent fasting on a low carb diet than on a high carb diet. It's different for different people. Some people can eat pizza and then go to fast but for other people, it becomes a nightmare. And here's the bonus I talked about, meditation. Why do I keep harping on meditation? Because we live in a culture where we like tangible things. We understand a pill, we understand food, they're, they're tangible, we can touch them. But stress and meditation, it's sort of abstract. We have a hard time grasping how powerful it can be. But I'm here to tell you that Sometimes the intangible can be more powerful than the other stuff as far as controlling hunger and mood and so forth. The thing that meditation does, it creates a relaxation response. And when you're relaxed, you're less anxious and jittery and less prone to go looking for food. And that's just one thing in itself, but it does so much more. That relaxation response activates your parasympathetic nervous system. And with that, you reduce the stress, you reduce the cortisol, you reduce the insulin, and you reduce hunger. And you do all of this at a physiological, at a neurological level. It's like it's built into your body. It's like you flip a switch. That's how powerful it is. I'm sure everyone watching can relate to how anytime that you're stressed, you kind of get some cravings. You feel an urge to eat something. Well, during a fight-flight response, your body 
is looking for resources to deal with some danger. It wants to top off your fuel stores. It says, give me some sugar, give me some fast fuel just in case. And that's where we get these cravings. But if you can create more relaxation, more parasympathetic activity, then stress goes down, cortisol, insulin, and hunger. It can be very, very powerful. So put these ideas to the test and let me know how it works. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you also check out that one. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.